You're watching Nigeria Votes on TVC, and we have been following the election. Collation is ongoing 24 hours after Nigerians went to the polls yesterday, and across the country, collation is ongoing. In some parts, uh, it's almost through, but the reports uh, we have is that INEC is on top of it, and we will bring you updates from everywhere. You can also stream live what we're doing here and uh, the, the follow the program on using uh, tvcnews.tv and be part of it, as well as on social media using uh, tvcnews.ng. I have uh, Ayodelia Adewale with me in the studio, as well as uh, Kotis Adigba, who have been doing analysis to this. And reports we have is that in Otupo, in Benue State, about three polling units, election or voting is still ongoing, as at this morning, because uh, the card readers couldn't uh, have network yesterday. So INEC decided to uh, extend it until today. So we're waiting to see how that process is. But on the whole, uh, there has been peaceful uh, process since yesterday in, in all those places. But is, uh, I was asking about the, the, the issue of the situation room earlier on. Now, data is being, co is, is being collated. The information is being collated. We've been doing this. No, this is not the first time. Even in 2015, there was situation room and all of that. What, what are we learning, really, if we still have uh, cases where uh, there is ballot box snatching and all of these places and all of that? What, what, what are we learning? Yeah, these are not the functions of situation rooms all over the world. No, but, th but they collect the information and make it available to security agents and even INEC and all of that. So well, it's out there. Look, it depends on what um, situation we are talking about. If it's the civil society, mm. they're probably looking for how the conduct is going. And so they, they, they collect this data and then they feel the security agencies you know about the conduct, the processes leading, whether it was fair, free, we, and we, we even remember precisely that civil society organization came out to, to name some states yes. that are seen as flashpoints. Yes. River yes. State was one of them. Yes. And the same thing they, they warned against still happened. Now, but the, the, the problem here is that, you know, we, we live in a country where it, it is difficult to solve two problems at a time. Okay. And that is because of the mindset of the people. So you were informed that River State is a place to watch out for because of violence. And then you, you decide to deploy the military to that place for the conduct of the election. And what you are going to get from the same situation room, the civil society situation room, and some Nigerians is that the election in Rivers was militarized. You deployed too many security people there. Do you, you understand the point? So, it's, it's a no-win situation for, for whichever government is in power when this issue. And I, and I think that's why a change of attitude by our people will solve this problem. It takes multiple parties to set up this kind of thing. It, it has to be politicians who are involved, it do or die politicians who have the funds to, do the, to, to recruit people who are willing to go out there and, and perpetrate this violence. Now, if the funds are available, the politicians are available, but the talks decide not to go ahead. You're still not going to find this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need to keep educating, enlightening people, telling them, speak to them. Look, I, I, I like to talk about the US and some of these advanced democracies because you know, the purpose of experience is that we, you and I don't have to suffer the same thing to learn the same lesson. You find schools in America where the monitors or prefects are not appointed. The they, lower, come from, they come the, from the system. The lowest grade of school, you have to campaign to your colleagues in school to be able to become their leader in the classroom. And what that does to you is that even from your very mm. early in you're, life, you're learning, you learning are exposed the ropes. <laughs> to contests of election as contests of ideas. And for votes. And you can converse for votes. So when you lose, you hug the other person, you congratulate them. If it's in the U.S. now that we're here talking, the virus campaigns are beginning to reach out to themselves. Look, we are winning. When are we expecting the phone call? You know, from your boss. <laughs> so we have to get, that, it's, that, it's a gradual process. That's interesting. Yes. All right, in this election, this election is seen as the biggest election on the African continent because of the number of people who are involved. About 84 million uh, people registered to vote, but about 72.2 million people uh, collected their PVCs and were eligible to vote and 
Whether the numbers actually went out to vote is something else, but this is the greatest number. And even when you talk about the number of political parties, we have 91 political parties and 73 presidential candidates in this election being the most we have had in Nigeria and the most on the African continent. Now, as we wind down gradually, whoever becomes president, whoever wins this election, we wait for INEC to announce that. But let's look at what tasks will be ahead of whoever becomes president from is announced president and, and sworn in on the, on the 29th of May, considering the realities, the challenges we have, and the resources that we have on ground. Well, the first challenge would be bring everybody back on board. Because after every game, you're going to have bruises. So the first thing is bring everybody back on board. Let them understand that we're all Nigerians. And regardless of the fact that we have promised you different programs, all of these programs are going to be enjoyed by Nigerians and uh, our friends that have come to do business here or live here. Uh, the second one is to provide and achieve your electoral promises. Because if you do that quite well, you'll be voted in into office again. We must understand that as we go on, the electorate are becoming stronger in terms of having information and in terms of de I mean, determining who will govern them. Gone are those days whereby you give pudding and you think people will go and vote for you. People are bold enough now to confront their slave masters, as seen in Inquara, for instance, and telling you that no, you ain't coming again. People are bold now to even confront security agents and telling them that no, you cannot cow us. And the media have more reach now into various corners of the country to showcase what is going on. The social media, the new media has also availed people opportunity to bring to bear and show the world what is happening. So there's nowhere to hide. The only thing you can do now, deliver on your electoral promise and people will continue to vote you into power. Curtis, yes, when INEC is in, is in the center point because it's the, it's the umpire, what, what, what would you expect, in as much as we have staggered elections between now and 2023, but what would you expect INEC to put in place? What new innovation precisely would you like to see? Well, INEC has got to consolidate on its processes. I'd like to see INEC create more methods of voting for people depending on what is available to them. Take for instance, areas where you don't have sufficient internet penetration, you cannot rely completely on the card reader. And we've seen that in Otoko now, mm -hmm. where the day after election is still holding. And there are some other places that we're going to hear. Uh, we want to see more efficient and robust registration, ongoing registration, like you have in other parts of the world. You attain the age, the voting age, it's easy, you go and get your your, your paper As getting so more people yeah, on so board. That, yeah, so that you can vote. So we're expecting to have over a million uh, vote voter registers. Reg and then we, sh we should also right. make it easy for people to go and pick up the, their cards when, when it's ready. Look at a few days to the election, look at the kiosk and all that. People, there were all kind of allegations of bribery or people demanding for, and people were shot out, some were shot out and all that. But again, it's also the Nigerian problem, the last minute dot com attitude. I have to wait for, for the last minute to, to pick You got the last minute dot com. Dot com. <laughs> now, now, having said that, mm -hmm. I, I also want to um, prevail on the, whoever is going to be elected by the Nigerian people as the president, that he's got the task of uniting the country as mm -hmm. much as possible. He's also got to tackle youth unemployment. It's a big problem. This is a time bomb. And what that means is that it needs to be creative. It needs to expand the scope of the economy, open up the economy, you know, and, and so yeah, there are so many things to do, really. All right. It's, it's so much uh, going forward, but we look forward to a greater Nigeria. Curtis Adigba, thank you for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks. Adela Diwali, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. Right. Okay, this is where we round off for this segment right now. At top of the hour, my colleague uh, Kemi Folade Emo will be taking us on the news update. And have a great day ahead. Uh, the collation is still ongoing, but keep a tab on TVC News, the Nigerian news leader. I am Mike Okwache.